alive. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you miss me. But anyway, um, it's good to be in home group. It's good to see everybody. And uh, we want you to continue to pray. And we're very thankful for God's faithfulness. He's been keeping his hands on um, upon us. So many different people have been getting sick and all these different things, but God has been faithful. Yes, and yes. Uh, we just need to continue to pray mm -hmm. and to continue to use wisdom and, and continue to be mindful of each other and all of those good things. Uh, we're going to get started. I want to teach on um, a simple subject tonight, but I think it's something that would be a real blessing to all of us, all right? And, uh, but as we get ready to do that, let's go to God in prayer. Sir, would you? Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this Bible study. We pray that you bless it according to your will in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you. I've, um, throughout the Gospels, Jesus, um, in an effort to help people, in an effort to reach people, he used various methods and, and, and things of that nature. But what I want to talk about tonight is, um, a, I want to talk about a parable, a parable. How Jesus used a parable to try to get people to understand or to come into an understanding so that they could experience God. And the first thing I want to do is define a parable. What is a parable? A parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. In other words, to teach you something, to show you something, to, to get you to open up your understanding so that you'll understand what is trying to be expressed or conveyed to you. In Matthew chapter 13, there were the chapter of many parables that Jesus used. Parable of the sword and all of that. Parable, he used the one about the pearl of great price and on and on and on. And in these parables, in these parables, he compared them to the kingdom of God is like unto this or like unto that. Which tells you how serious this is. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, do not take the things of God seriously. They, get, they just take it or leave it. Or it's, they, they're okay with it. If they get it, if they don't, they don't really care. Because if people really care, more effort would be put into it. The things, isn't it true that we make time? or take time for things that's important to us. Mm -hmm. We make time for it. We find a way to do it, if it's important to us. Like if prayer is important to you, you're gonna make time for it. If reading and studying your Bible is important to, important to you, you're gonna figure out a way, I don't care how busy you are, because staying in touch with God, learning and growing and whatnot, you're going to make time to do it. I don't care if you got to watch your TV show. I don't care if you need to go to the store. I don't care if you go, go somewhere with your friend. Whatever the case may be, you have to make sure that you take care of the things of God. You have to. If you know that you're serving God and serving God is important to you, church is important, Bible study is important, and on and on and on, things of God, all right? And so, Jesus said, I have to do whatever it takes.
to get people who maybe don't quite get it or maybe who don't quite understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to use a parable. I'm going to use an illustration. I'm going to use something that maybe they can relate to and maybe it'll help them to understand. Like to the farmer, he used farming. And, and, and other things, you know, whatever the case may be. So that an understanding can be reached. So we understand what a parable is. Why a parable? I just kind of explained to you. But why the parable? Matthew chapter 13 verses 10 through 11 explains to us why Jesus used parables. Okay? And the disciples came unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? They asked Jesus, Jesus, why are you talking to these people in parables? Mm -hmm. Why? You don't do that to us. Duh, you already understand. <laughs> right? If, Miss Angie, if you already understood something, why do I need to explain it to you? <laughs> right? <laughs> if you already have an understanding of what you're doing, if I give you a task to do at work, say, would you go do this and that? And you already understand, why do I need to go and explain it to you? So, the disciples asked him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. In other words, people who are already in God should know the things of God. But people that's not saved, people that's not in God, need to be brought into God. And if we have to use an illustration or whatever it takes... To unlock the mystery of what serving God is. To a lot of people, the reason why they don't serve God, because God is a mystery to them. Church is a mystery to them. Salvation is a mystery to them. Right? Uh, what is a mystery? You know, like a difficult, something that's maybe difficult, or perhaps even impossible to understand on the surface, but is unlocked upon receiving whatever information you may need to unlock your understanding, to unlock your understanding. The average person, if you reach them with the right information, it can unlock the understanding that they need so that they can respond or react, all right? And so, one other thing I want to share with you about the mysteries of God and uh, people who are already saved, it's not a mystery to them, but the people that are not saved, God is a mystery, or the, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is a mystery. Um, Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Okay? But God hath revealed them unto us by what? By his spirit. For the Spirit searcheth what? All things. Yea, the deep things of God. You need to be saved and you need the Spirit of God to understand the things of God. It's just the way it is. Miss mm -hmm. Angie, that's another reason why you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost will open up your understanding. Yeah. And it's more than just speaking in tongues. 
Having the Holy Ghost will open up your understanding of the things of God because the Spirit of God gives you the power to do that when you have the Holy Ghost. And so I would like to in that Let's look at this parable. What are the lessons that we can learn from the parable of the net? You know, I told you there's a parable of the, the, the sower, the parable of the, the uh, pearl of great price and whatnot. What about the parable of the net? The net. As I was up, studying and looking at this early this morning. God really blessed me just studying this. It blessed me just studying it and digging this out and, and just thinking about the word of God and thinking about what it all means. Um, the first thing I want to do is just read the verses to you and then I'll just point things out to you so that you'll understand what Jesus was trying to convey to them. Okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 13 verses, so it's only four verses, 47, 48, 49, 50, four verses, right? Matthew 13 and 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven, there it is again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a what? net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. All different kinds of fish came up in the net. Verse 48 which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels but cast the bad away. Then verse 49. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever. Boy, that word sever just sounds so. <laughs> man, when God God goes sever you off. Mm -hmm. that, that, oh, man, that's, that, that's something so dr drastic. It's so devastating about the word sever. Mm -hmm. And sever the wicked. From among the just. Man, God is going to sever the wicked from among the just. Man, that just there's something about that. If that doesn't speak to your heart. Verse 50. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The parable of the net. The first reality of this parable, this illustration that Jesus is using, is the net. Mm -hmm. uh, God reaching out mm -hmm. to the whole world. Mm -hmm. To the whole world. Is not the gospel a whosoever will gospel? Mm -hmm. My Bible tells me, so the fishing nets of God is cast into all of humanity, which tells you that God is not prejudiced. That first verse tells you God's not prejudiced because when he cast his net into the world, all kinds came up, mm -hmm. right? All kinds. He is not a respecter of person. We know God is not prejudiced. You remember John chapter 4, the woman of Samaria, when Jesus met her at the well, the, the, Samaria, the people of Samaria, uh, the Jews and the Samaritans had no dealings. And uh, they, they had uh, issues with each other, but Jesus purposely went to this woman to show them that I don't care what feelings you have, you do what's right. Right? If God tells you to witness to a person a different color than you, you put your, you need, you know, anyway, why, why how, how could you be saved and be prejudiced? 
We're supposed to love everybody. Right. Amen. And one of the greatest scriptures in all of the world proves God's love. John 3.16. Yes. For God so loved the world. Amen. He didn't just go to the black man. He didn't just go to the white man, the Hispanic, the Asian, and all the islanders. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we find that the fishing nets of God went out into the world. And then the Bible also says in Romans 10 and 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. Amen. All kinds. I have a message. I, have, I don't think I've ever preached it here. All kinds in the net. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when the nets came up, it was all kinds. Mm -hmm. uh, God's interested in all people. Yes, sir. God's interested in all people. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds in the net. Right? <laughs> oh, man, that thing feels yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. It's time to soul win. Yes. This whole Jesus. thing is about souls. Man. That's what the fishing net is about. Souls. Mm -hmm. God needs people. If, if you're watching this online, God needs you. Now, God doesn't have to have us, but God needs us. Amen. Right? Amen. Number two, we want to look at the reality of the people that are caught in the net. Um, look at verse uh, 49. No, verse 48. Now, we find that all kinds were in the net, right? You notice that. Look at verse 48. Which when it was full, they drew to shore, sat down, and gathered the good into the vessels. But what? Cast the bad away. The reality, and what's so sad about this, is that there are times that God reaches people, but they don't stay, they, they, they don't want to stay in the net or they're not, they don't meet God's criteria. They came up, God drew them in, but they refused to meet God's criteria. So God keeps the good and gets rid of the bad, right? The great separation. The reality of heaven and hell. Make no mistake about it tonight. Heaven is real. Hell is real. There's good people. And there's bad people. Right? God bless you. Amen. The, the age of cell phones, right? <laughs> I want you guys to know that there's coming a day that if you don't get right with God, that if you don't get yourself together, that if you don't make a God a reality in your life, if you don't ever figure out the forgiveness of sins, and serve God and live for God and change and there's going to come a day when that decision will be made for you. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you don't want that. I want to share something that my mother told me. Some of you may have heard me share this. My grandfather, God rest his soul, I loved him. I loved my grandfather. He was a good man, a great man in his own right. But my grandfather and my mom would sit and drink coffee and talk and all of that. And my mom was serving God. But my grandfather told her, he said, baby, he called her baby because she was the baby. 
of the three kids that my grandmother had with him. He said, I know what the Bible says. I've read it from cover to cover. I know what it says. He said, but I just don't get how you do it. He said, I don't see, he said, I just don't see how you live it. How do you do it? And there's a lot of people like that. They know what they, they like to come to church. They like the songs. They like the fellowship. They like the, but in their minds, they cannot see themselves ever changing, ever serving God. In the back of their minds, they, they, they don't think they're good enough. I can't ever make the grade. I can never do this. How can you do this? How could you change? How could you serve God? How could you do this? And some people never figure that out. But if you don't, hell will be your home. It is a reality of the word of God. It's just what it is. Um, Romans 4 and 12 tells us, So then every one of us shall give an account. Of himself to God. Do you not know that you got to give an account for what you do and don't do? Good or bad. You got to give an account. Um, and so I'm just saying there was all kinds in the net. But then God had to separate them out. There comes a time we just had one of our members pass away. A situation. I don't know, but God does. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know one way or the other what's going on with people. What's going on with you? What's your problem? Why can't we, why, why is it that we can figure everything else out, but we can't figure the things of God out. We can't get ourselves right with God. What's wrong with people? Number three, and I'm going to finish with this one. Uh, the last few verses. So shall it be at the end of the world. Verse 49 and 50. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell is a real thing. It's a real thing. There are people who die lost without God. It's sad. It is a tragedy. It is an, if, if one person dies lost without God, it is a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Not a, you know, uh, we don't talk about this all the time, but people who are unsaved, unchanged, people that have held on to their wicked ways, will be severed and cast into the lake of fire. All kinds in the net. It's time to decide and figure out once and for all whether or not you want to be in the net. You want to be a child of God. You want to really serve God. There's no more time to waste. There's no more time to play around with. The Bible said now it is high time for us to wake up out of sleep. For now is our redemption closer than nigh than it's ever been. Right? Psalm 145 and 20. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. God is love, but sin is still sin, right? 
Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The net, the parable of the net, when God reaches out to the world, all kinds are in the net. But not all kinds meet the criteria. The Bible says he will separate the good from the wicked, from the bad. And then they will be cast. He will put the good in the vessels of God. But the bad will be cast. Will be severed and cast into the lake of fire, into the uh, furnace. This is a real thing. All kinds in the net. Are there any questions tonight or is there anything anyone would like to share? Maybe there's something on your heart. Um, I was thinking um, in finishing this up um, of a song but it slipped my mind, I was thinking. But maybe we could do just a little bit of this in closing. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making in this room. I thank you for those that will hear or listen to this message. The net of God is reaching out to all men. But what will you do with Christ? What would you do with his love, his grace, and his mercy tonight? All kinds in the net. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Bless this group. Bless this area. Bless this uh, apartment building. For thy glory and for the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's have good fellowship. All right. Thank you. Service tomorrow night at 7.30. God bless you. Amen.